we feel unsatisfactory and begin to second guess our actions and words, causing us anxiety and loneliness. With social media, we feel the need to broadcast our accomplishments in the form of status updates and so forth, causing us to be boastful just to feel noticed and recognized. We all have those friends whose status updates consist of so much science homework, hashtag YOLO, or I just had oatmeal for breakfast. What part of friendship states that we must be subject to every mundane detail of our friends' lives? According to a study conducted recently about gauging personal worth by online standards, concluded that when we see a post that's content, is about someone having more fun than we are currently having, or the post is more likes than we usually get, we feel lonely and underappreciated. We still value human contact and feel left out and lonely when our friends or others post online about how much fun they had on the weekend without us. This goes to show that being included in offline activities is cherished and considered more valuable than spending time online by yourself. John Cacioppo once said, the greater the proportion of face-to-face -face interactions, the less lonely you are. The greater the proportion of online interactions, the lonelier you are. Social media creates a standard that very few of us can live up to. The realm of social media is highly competitive in the sense that everyone wants credit for their statuses, pictures, and posts. We alter our opinions, interests, personalities, and looks to fit the elusive, unconfirmed online mold that we will never be uh, we will never perfect. This causes us loneliness. We see others getting recognition for things we fail at. We feel stilted in our online selves, yet we still uh, endorse this growing industry that doesn't fit humanity. But instead of changing the industry, we change ourselves. In the words of Albert Einstein, I fear the day that technology will surpass our human interaction. The world will have a generation of idiots. Thank you for your time. Jesse, you have five minutes to take out your social integration, a social aggression on that line of reasoning. You may begin.
It enables us, and it is not the cause of loneliness, ladies and gentlemen, so please do not believe their lies. Thank you. Now, to rebut that, we have Tracy Harvey. You have five minutes to prevent another MySpace misstep. Tracy, you're on. Thank you. Jeff, how come we're not friends on Facebook? Jeff, I'm feeling lonely. I just sent you a friend invite. So we're living in a contradiction. We're more tapped in, plugged in, and connected than we've ever been before, and it's making us lonelier. Facebook and social media is tearing us apart from each other, and it's creating the most crippling loneliness we've ever experienced in history. Because of Facebook and social media, We've created three human fantasies, and these are fantasies, they're not real, even though our worthy opponents want us to think that they're real. The first fantasy is that we're in complete control of our situation all the time, because if we're not enjoying what we're doing right now, like in a debate, I just went into my social media and had a conversation with one of my better friends. But the truth is, we're not in control all the time. Social media is controlling us, and we're addicted to it, which is not healthy. Fantasy number two, there's always a digital soapbox present at any moment of the day for us to share our important feelings and our clever ideas, and there's always somebody listening to what we have to say. But, as my colleague said, it's not true. How many people out there on your Facebook page are really your friends and are truly interested in what you have to say? And not to mention, we're adding to our narcissistic society where we're always talking about ourselves, and how is that healthy? And fantasy number three is that we can't be lonely because we're connected all the time using Facebook. But the problem with being connected all the time, 24 hours a day, is we don't know how to be alone anymore. We don't know how to spend alone time. And this is actually driving us into a deeper state of loneliness. So while Facebook and social connections are allowing for broader connection, more connections, they're shallower. And they're removing our deep face-to-face -face connections and making us physically and mentally ill. We used to experience an emotion and let it sit for a while, digest it, learn, learn from it, understand what it did to us, and then we'd share it with our friends. But now we need instant validation. We associate an emotion with having to share it. And so what's happening is we don't know how to be alone anymore. And because we don't know how to be alone, when we are alone, we don't know what to do. We're losing that ability to cope. And if you don't have yourself, for yourself, you've got nothing. 
So it's the quality of social interactions, not the quantity, just say 330 Facebook friends, <laughs> that determines loneliness. And did you know, here's just a side fact, did you know that one in five marriage breakups happen because of Facebook? So what we're doing online is affecting us offline. And social media is encouraging all of these connections at the cost of real deep connections, causing us deeper loneliness, which is making us miserable. Mr. Yaz. It's your turn to make a rebuttal. Try not to make a social pariah of yourself. Get some of the audience to friend you. I just want to say uh, to my Twitter friend, BigHarp10. That's BigHarp10 is the hashtag. <clears throat> we did start this debate <clears throat> about a week ago uh, through our discussions, asynchronous discussions on Twitter. And uh, we didn't have the chance to face to face this and actually hash it even better. But we started the basis, thanks to social media. We have that sort of foundation, so I'm glad we had that opportunity. Thank you, social media. I love you. I love you. Okay, now I'm going to get serious. <clears throat> As my colleague mentioned, that uh, our contention is that social media doesn't make us lonely. In fact, it actually empowers us to seek out connections that reduce our individual sense of isolation, both professionally and personally. And of course, we know that social media doesn't make people lonely. People are already lonely. You're either lonely already, or you're not. Twitter's not responsible for that. Facebook's not responsible for that. As writer Marshall McLuhan once said, the medium is the message, which means basically not how, it's not what we say, it's how we use it. How the medium we use it is what's important in social media. So in my personal, there are people out there whose jobs are unfulfilled, whose lives are unfulfilled, whose relationships are unfulfilled. Therefore, they're becoming lonely. They feel isolated, disconnected from society. So what do they do? Because they're already lonely. They turn to social media. But they're already lonely. That's the important thing you need to understand. They're looking for something to find likeness, to find connection through social media. So those big gamers, those MMOG groups who love those big online games, those eHarmony people, you know who you are over there, trying to find love and romance because you're already lonely. You have social media to thank for that. Thank you, social media. I love you. But it's no different than what we do in society right now. We actually try and join our groups. So Kiwanis, Lions, these groups, these social service groups, you already try and do in real life. We try and do that through social media, trying to make a difference and contribute. From a personal point of view, uh, my trip to social media is very important because um, the argument can be made that now as a teacher, as an educator, social media is part of what we do. It's an expectation of you. If you're a professional, if you're in the health field, if you are a researcher, if you're a writer, if you're a technologist, social media is part of your tools. It's required. And I'll argue that social media, in fact, is expanding our ability to connect, collaborate, and create and share new ideas in the realm of learning and teaching. Definitely. I also want to acknowledge the fact that there's a there's a important um, media has allowed us to remove my personal my professional loneliness and the barriers that I've had as a teacher librarian in a very small district with very small, small librarian numbers. In order for me to connect, I am using social media to meet people I wouldn't otherwise meet. I can't afford to go to Vancouver all the time for conferences. I can't meet meetings here and there everywhere. I can't travel hundreds of kilometers to meet people. But social media allows me to do that. Allows me to improve my professional and my personal um, learning. And also, too, um, the question we had about social media and in terms of Facebook, and I keep going back to Facebook as the end all be all. In fact, I don't even like Facebook that much, but I will say that L.B. Rogers has several groups on Facebook that they use to connect with their students, and that has been an important part of meeting and keeping the conversation going, keeping the connections going. So I want to wrap up by saying, in fact, social media is not contributing to loneliness. It's already there. You're already lonely. You are. You're just trying to share it with everyone else. So let's use, for, let's use social media for what it's meant to be, is to share and connect, and to not dwell on what's lonely and what's not. Thank you.
Thank so you, debaters. Sorry, so much for a prepared speech. I knew I should have done a prepared speech. I didn't even follow it. Thank you, debaters. Uh, <laughs> each of you would like to come up and get yourself a uh, noise maker so that you can chime in for the firing line question. Don't look at the question. Nobody likes the, nobody likes the sound. Okay, chime in when you have an answer to the following questions. Ready? What is the percentage of workers in North America that utilize social media sites during working hours? Okay, I need to step back a bit. What is the percentage of workers in North America that utilize social media sites during working hours? I'm going to have to give this one a trace. A percentage of oh, percentage. people that use it during their work hours? That is correct. 55%. I'm going to say 75%. And the correct answer is 66%. You each get one. Ow! So we're halfway between. So two thirds. Lovely. So if you're not, look at the two co workers on either side of you. Which branch? of the United States military has expressly banned social media from all of its networks. Okay, I'll give you a hint. There are four branches. There's the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, and the Marine Corps. Uh, the Air Force. Fair enough. She was the first one to answer. Marines. The Marines is correct. Few the proud. The rest of them, the rest of them are act actively engaged in analyzing what's on the internet. How many hours per week? That's why we love this. How many hours per week, on average, do teens? Teenagers in North America spend on social media sites. 70. 70. 70. How many? 70. How many? 15. Well, you're, you're somewhat closer. It's 19 hours a week on average. And that's per teenager, which is you're not using it, the person next to you is doing it. Eight That's all the questions I have. So <laughs> we're going to move on to the final pitch. This is your last chance to bring a member of the audience into Google Plus circles. So and Jess, you're up first. And I say Jess all the time because I don't want to accidentally pronounce the name, so it's Jess. You're up first. You have two minutes. Maybe. Well, ladies and gentlemen, before I um, just do my final speech. If those question answers offer us anything, I think it's that those numbers mean that those people are obviously not lonely. Because if people are connected to social media 12 hours a week, and they spend over 30 hours a week at school, that is a lot of time connecting with their friends and peers. I would have to say that those 40 plus hours a week must equal some sort of social meaning, and it would mean that you are not going to be lonely. Because seriously, that's a large majority of the time. And also, what we would like to stress is the fact that, no, social media is not the only solution, but we need social media as the perfect balance between face-to-face -face and online interactions. Because without having that social media there, we would not be able to plan our face-to-face -face interactions as much as we do today. And now, just rebutting their speech more so, they have said that... It, being connected more than ever tears us apart. Being connected is something that we have done for all of history. Something that humans strive to do is to be connected. We have endless phone bills, we have long Skype calls, and that can all be replaced with social media 
or added in to social media. So seriously, I think that must say being connected makes us less lonely, ladies and gentlemen. And now they've also said that social media controls us. Yes, well, when I am getting a notification from someone who wants to talk to me, that does control me because that is someone who makes me not feel lonely. I'm pretty sure Tia is jealous because her phone, if she has one, which she doesn't, does not get notifications and she is really just lonely, ladies and gentlemen. So Tia, I would really recommend to fix your loneliness problem that maybe you pick up a smartphone one day. Oh. <laughs> now, I know anyways with us three, um, our cell phones can provide us a great network of interactions with other peers. As Teresa, or sorry, pardon me, Tracy had said, where her notifications are always going off and she is having people wanting to contact her. Now, mo unless there's something wrong with her, I don't think she says when she gets a notification, oh, I'm really lonely, someone wants to talk to me. Like, come on, T as most of us are teenagers or else um, work in like an education environment, when students take out their phone, it's because they want to talk to someone. We don't do it to say, I'm lonely, someone text me, and then if you do tweet that, someone will usually text you. So ladies and gentlemen, without having these social media uses, we would be much more lonely. Ladies and gentlemen, just overall, we would like you to please press your like button for side negative because we seriously think social media allows us to do much better in our Thank you, Mr. Yaz, yes. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Tia, your last two minute chance to show us how privacy settings are no match for private settings. Thank you. Uh, uh, I'd first like to address the point of Mr. Yaz's apparent uh, over, overly affectionate use of language towards social media. Now, me on the affirmative team think that this is a bit of an addiction on Mr. Yaz's part. Honestly, if he can't even um, express this, this love to his, his colleagues, his students, us sitting here today, and he's, he's addressing this love towards us in an online site, which makes him lonelier. There is something seriously wrong with Mr. Yaz. So, so we just like to say once again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you to the human face-to-face -face interaction. We do love you. We love you all. And we love you for being here today. And we love you for connecting with us face to face and not through a computer screen. Um, now, Jesse, seemed, uh, Jesse brought up the statistic of a doubled number of loneliness between the years of 1972 and 2004, I believe. However, what he seemed to miss was that Facebook is not the only social media site. And although Facebook was invented in 2004, um, other social media sites were invented previous to this, and this is what caused the sudden uh, doubling in the percentage of loneliness. So this trend is only going to go up. The more time we spend online, the more time we spend on Facebook, the more time we spend using social media. This trend is just simply going to go up and up, and people are going to get lonelier and lonelier due to social media and Facebook. Um, I believe Mr. Yaz brought up the fact that people are lonely already pre-Facebook and pre-social media. However, we would like to um, ask Mr. Yaz for his personal experience on this factor and see if Mr. Yaz was lonely before Facebook or if he's just lonely now with Facebook. I have moments in the night. I have doubt. Okay, thank you, Mr. I Yaz. I worry. I'm disconnected. Wait now, a minute, my phone's ringing. Hang what, on, someone's this, calling me. This yeah, is baby. what social media is doing to us. It is making us overly dependent on our phones, on our Facebook accounts, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Yaz is one of the poor, poor victims of this cause of loneliness, and we would like to express our deepest regret towards Mr. Yaz and his apparent uh, addiction to social media, ladies and gentlemen. I just might add again. Uh, no, sorry, this no. is my rebuttal. Thank you, Jesse, just like, at this time. Thank you. You'd really need a cell phone, I think, to get over thank your you. jealousy. Jesse, but, um, if I had a phone, you would not have my number. So, thank you. Now, uh, back on uh, the track, I believe Mr. Yaz mentioned in the final few seconds of his speech that uh, social media 
and we should use it for what it's meant to be used for, which is sharing and connecting. Now, although uh, Mark, I believe it was Mark Zuckerberg who invented Facebook, in invented it for this purpose and for these reasons, it is being misused because humanity, we as humanity, cannot cope online. We are overly dependent. Mr. Yaz is a prime example of this, ladies and gentlemen. And we just cannot excuse ourselves from the fact that we are being addicted to more and more online sites. And although it was meant to be used for sharing and connecting, we are misusing it, and it is making us lonely. Thank you very much for your time today, ladies and gentlemen. OK. I hadn't anticipated a bare knuckle round, but we ended up with that anyway. So it's time for the audience to decide who likes Tia and Tracy's argument for social media making us lonely. Please applaud. <laughs> who would like to friend Jesse and Jeff's position on social media not making us lonely? Well, looks like the ladies have it. Thank you. And thank you for joining us at today's debate. And I would like to leave you with one bit of philosophy. Oh, yeah. yep. But uh, remember, friends help you move. Real friends help you move bodies. And we have some debate gifts for our debaters. Ah, we have uh, we have gifts for Jesse. Jesse, if you want to come up here, here you go. And for Mr. Yaz, Teresa, hand out. The, come on, don't hand them to me because hand them out. Always good. Always good. Thank you. And finally, a round of applause for our debaters and for Teresa putting. Thank you. And for Teresa putting together our debate today, for Shane and Dan for putting together our live stream, and for all of you for being here at Selkirk today, we hope to see you at our next debate. Thank you.